Hi there, welcome to the Kenny Veach M-Cave mystery case. Today I have proof and receipts to highlight the sheer hypocrisy within some humans out there, considering what they said about me in previous time behind my back. I'm going to be presenting it to you all today and I want to make it very clear at this moment in time what's been documented and what's being covered is where it is. Could it change in the future? Maybe. Just take in mind that these observations are of right now and what's recently happened. Welcome to those that are currently here in the live premiere. Be sure to share your thoughts and opinions in the live chat box and for everybody else watching or on catch up afterwards, leave comments down below. In addition, down below, you'll find some pinned comments. You want to check those links out regarding my channel. And if you do want to catch up on my recent videos, top right corner of the screen, eye symbol, click on that, you'll be redirected to some additional videos to catch up there. I strongly advise and stress that you stick around for this video from start to finish to truly understand what's being captured, documented, talked about. As you know, I'm at high level when it comes to picking up on hypocrisy of humans. I've analysed people for over 10 plus years now. And once again, it's shown by the title of this video, you'll know specifically who I'm referring to. And that is of the Kenny Veach investigator online known as Artari. Didn't have a problem with her in the past, but she changed in behaviour with time and then developed a problem with me. And here and there has spoken behind my back and I've had to defend myself here and there in response, right? And the last time Artari called me out was calling me out on Warlike Raf is profiting off the Kenny Veach M-Cave case, that Warlike Raf is abusing, overusing, and exploiting content and other people's videos to gain from there onwards, and not actually really caring about the case or bothered to do research, even though I did do research and material was distributed in other ways compared to what she thinks of, right? So it was along the lines of that. And whilst I defended myself at the time and it was done and dusted, it's Artari's most recent actions which are of, you know, of interest and kind of go against her mentality of what she was saying in the past. So I want to do like a comparison of what she's recently done, her recent actions within the Kenny Veach case and video wise, and what she called me out on months ago, okay? Apologies about my voice, I'm still messed up because I'm ill, right? But it's important to do this video because it's only just happened and it needs to be documented now before it disappears, before it gets deleted or some mysterious shit happens in the background. It needs to be covered right now it needs to be addressed and the hypocrisy is glowing at this moment in time, okay? So don't go anywhere, make sure you're ready to listen, look, okay? And we'll get straight into it. The order of how we're gonna go about things right now is, we're gonna look at Artari's latest post, her recent actions, and then we'll compare to what she's previously said when calling me out on a particular issue. Let me show you the receipts right now and you'll understand. As you can see on screen, posted one day ago on Atari's community tab page, the caption reads, members only are now able to see my Kenny Veach research. There's a lot more videos to put up here, but I'm feeling sick at the moment and I'll add more later, okay? It will make more sense shortly as to what I'm getting at. But you see the playlist down below, a total of 15 videos present, more may be added in the future. The thumbnail of that playlist appears to be one of the videos she did in the past of the CCTV 2018 break-in footage in Las Vegas of the Veach family run healing store in which there was that comparison made of was the intruder the person that broke in Kenny Veach or not and Atari believes it's not the case and she did a videos debunking it etc as well as past videos too. Take in mind 
that what Atari is presenting here, yes, it's research on the Kenny Veach case, but it's from the past of when she was active covering the case. So they're not exactly new videos, they're from the past, but she's decided to put them back out there so the general public can watch them once again. Now, previously, Atari said she took them down, privatised them, because she was getting attacked. She was threatened from some very dark individuals out there, including the possibilities of the Kenny Beach family trying to silence her as well. So I can understand protecting one's family safety, identity, protecting yourself, even if it means taking down certain content or privatising it. Yeah, I get that. But look how it's been presented here. How, you know, the accessibility of it, that's what the biggest issue is. That's where the hypocrisy lies. Members only are now able to see the videos. If you're not a member, you can't watch the videos. An example being what you see on screen, just as a test, clicked on one of the videos, obviously not a member, as you can see, and this comes up on screen. Join this channel to get access to members-only content like this video and other exclusive perks. And also down below, highlighted in green with a star, members only. Okay? Now, what does that ultimately mean? How do you become a member? And what does that lead to? To become a member on a person's channel, normally there would be a join button down below under the title of that video. Um, for me, it wasn't, which is a bit odd. Maybe it's different from channel to channel or because if you're blocked, it might not show up as an opportunity to do so. But if that's not the case, um, even if you just go onto a person's YouTube channel, there would normally be a button there which would say join. Or if not that, if there was a live stream or a live chat, there would be like a money symbol somewhere on the screen near to the live chat box. You'd click on it and then you'd be able to gift membership or join a part of the membership, right? The key thing is, at the end of the day, once you've joined, you then have access to certain perks like badges, custom emojis, if they're set up by the creator themselves. Sometimes you might get other additional exclusives like priority to being responded to before everybody else, maybe having exclusive access to Discord or Reddit, groups, hangout chats, etc. It can differ from creator to creator and so can the price plans because you can set different tiers, tier one, tier two, tier three. The prices can go up, but what you get out of it also goes up too. So there can be variety at times. And in this case, what Atari has done is if you join as a member, you will then have access to Kenny Veach videos and research, which could be of interest or importance to you when learning about the case. The biggest problem is and you might have already catched up on it now, when you join as a member, you have to pay. Unless it's given for free, gifted memberships by somebody else, most of the time, you're going to be joining as a member, you want to be able to watch the Kenny Veach videos, well, you got to pay for it. So ultimately, what this boils down to is Atari has locked Kenny Veach videos and research behind a paywall. So, Take in mind when Atari previously was calling Warlike Ref out for profiting off the Kenny Veach case, and now Atari has decided to lock actual Kenny Veach videos behind a paywall. You have to pay a certain fee per month in order to watch those videos and to keep those benefits of being able to do so. Hmm. Now, with that in mind, let's look back at two what Atari previously said months ago about me. So as you can see on screen, this is actually a screenshot from a previous video I did. Now the screenshot says comment one day ago, but it wasn't. It was one day ago at the time of when I did this video, but the video made was months ago now. So just take that into mind for context reasons. But I believe this was on Atari's page, and if not that, Jay Chucks, a part of a comment thread. 
It was at the time of when I last defended myself. I will provide a link down below or somewhere on the screen in order for you to check back for the context of the screenshots and my original response to Atari, okay? Don't worry, it's all under control. But I'll just reread what she had to say at the time about Warlight Ref and in general. So Atari responded back to Jeff Clark saying, yeah, I took my videos down for safety reasons. And yes, you're correct about assumptions. Research is absolute and there have been trails that have led to certain people or trials. A uh, lot of Kenny's information was deleted as things were being brought up. There are those who like to talk without doing their own research, which is smart and patient if one can find it. I don't understand why things are being brought up when it was brought up long ago. Is it because certain people want to profit from it? Too much ego and stubbornness? I've asked questions to him, but he never responded. I agreed with most of what you shared. You've been around the longest and have been up there after Sean's hikes anyways. Thanks for your response. So this initial reply by Atari to Jeff Clark, third party talking in third person in reference to Warlight Ref at the time who uploaded a video, I believe, of the official police report of Kenny Veach and supposedly it was done in the past by Atari. Been there, done that and Atari was trying to understand why did Warlight Raft decide to make a video all of a sudden now. But take in mind, I was doing the video because I had additional new points to add on and Atari's previous coverage at the time was all removed or deleted. So it's okay Atari saying, oh, it's already been done, it's already been covered this. But at the end of the day, if it's not publicly viewable, then it's absolutely pointless. What matters is having it somewhere, archived or not, re-uploaded or not, and presentable. And it was done in my own unique commentary, right? But Atari was suggesting that because Warlight Ref decided to upload a video and cover material previously covered by another individual, but from a different point of view, was it done to stubbornness or because one has an ego? Or is it because Warlight Ref is trying to profit from it, right? That's what Atari was throwing out at the time. And this becomes a bit more personal here, because if we look at the later responses, Atari says, I understand what you say, Jeff, but there are things that pissed off Sean Carner, also known as Horlecker, and really Robin, as well as what he did to me. That is why, that is why I know profiting from and taking credit from him is top priority for him. Him means Warlight Ref, in case you're wondering. It's been this way for a long time. It's not because of his new viewers. It's his actions in community post where he's so vain at how many views and subscribers he has. And when he posts that, not many people are looking at his videos. I like your fairness where this is just some things, not everything is mentioned behind the scenes that the public are not aware of within this case. So Atari is making it seem like behind the scenes, there's all kinds of darkness going on with Warlight Ref and nobody knows about it. Well, it looks like Atari has made it very clear and transparent the direction she's taken in recent time. Hmm. But once again, let's just reread some of the key points mentioned a bit higher up and then compare back to Atari, okay? So, Atari says, pissing off Sean Horlacher, uh, really Robin, as well as what Warlight Raf did to me. That is why I know profiting from and taking credit for him, Warlight Raf, is a top priority for him. It's been this way for a long time. Hmm. So Atari is calling Warlike Ref out for profiting and manipulating and exploiting the Kenny Veach case, making money from it. That's what Atari is stating here, but also putting it in a, in a way of it's done in such a dark, manipulative, evil way. Right. So what's this all about then? Atari. Oh, let me think. 
I'm going to re-upload or make my videos public again about Kenny Veach, MK case coverage, but this time round, even though I called Warlike Ref out for supposedly profiting off the case and all kinds of dark secrets revealed there, what I'm going to do now is lock my research behind a paywall so then people have to pay for it, I get the money, and then people can learn about the case. It's interesting because Atari said, I've done my research, I've done the dirty work, people weren't there to listen, tough shit, you got to learn yourself now, you got to do your own research. Well, if that's the case, but now suddenly you're providing this content once again, you kind of backtracked on yourself. It seems like you might have negotiated in between, such as, you know what, no, I'm going to put the videos back up so people can check them out, but, you know... You can learn, you can listen to my gospel, but there is a payment as like an apology for not listening in the first place. So you pay to become a member of my channel and you get Kenny Veach coverage. That seems a little bit dark and manipulative, um, if I'll be honest with you. Reality is, and this is 100% a fact, every single Kenny Veach M Cave mystery video that I've done, research, analysis, comparisons, findings, opinions, theories, everything, map analysis, hike routes, hiker analysis, everything you could think of. Over 300 plus videos on the Kenny Veach case and every single one is publicly available. Anyone from anywhere can watch my videos and coverage on the Kenny Veach case. None of those videos are locked behind a paywall. None. Okay? So for Atari to call Warlike Ref out for the monetary gain, and yet all of a sudden now, Atari coming across as if she's doing the same thing. You know? Because in the past, the way Atari was being very critical of those like me, claiming, you know, profiting off the Kenny Veach case in a nasty, dark way. When you start critiquing, normally you're doing that because you despise a certain action, mentality, trait, whatever it is, you despise it and you're making an observation about it and stuff you don't like. And that normally coincides with you yourself not doing it. You yourself not participating in it. But what's happened is she has participated. Now she is or she could gain monetary stuff through these Kenny Veach videos. If people are really desperate and want to learn about the case and her research from her perspective, you've got to pay for it, right? Fancy that. Imagine having Kenny Veach research locked behind a paywall and that person that's locked it behind a paywall has called others out in the past and been very critical of those that gain through monetary reasons and yet they're doing the same thing now. That's what you, you know, label and define as a grade A hypocritical prat that's documented their own hypocrisy. But luckily, you know, it's under control here because I managed to document it as we went along, okay? So I just wanted to point this out now before it disappears, before posts get deleted or things change. The other thing I want to stress once again, and I hope you've stuck around for this video from start to finish, is... At this moment in time of making this video, seeing their post and the format of it and what's locked behind a paywall, at this moment in time, this is how it appears. In the future, it could change. Those videos or posts could be deleted or it could become public. That, that's, not, that's not the point. Well, the point is that an individual out there has been a full-on hypocrite calling somebody out for doing something, supposedly, and yet they do it themselves eventually. That's a good example of a hypocrite, and I wanted to document that to you, because I've always said, when a human becomes a hypocrite, you can no longer trust them nor take them seriously anymore, and I've 
you know, nailed the dead wood when it comes to the Dylan Rounds case in community when it comes to hypocrites. I've seen many there, and I've also seen some in the Kenny of each case, and the list keeps on adding, okay? Um, now, the actual content itself, you know, people could be asking me, am I bothered by the actual content locked behind a paywall from Atari's point of view? I mean, you know, if you're doing it in a way to either filter out the bad people and just allow loyal ones to watch and view the content. Yeah, it's a way of filtering. Just like how you might do live streams and you say it's a members only or subscriber only chat. It gets rid of all the spam and the dodgy people out there. I get that. Um, is it a problem here just in general? I mean, if Atari never called me out in the past and Atari now decided to just do paywall content, um, would I have covered this video? Not really, right? Do you know what I'm saying? You know, Atari's doing whatever she's doing for a certain reason. Okay, fair enough. But for her to call out somebody for a certain action and yet they do it themselves later, that's hypocritical. Because it's just like with the Dylan Rounds case and community where you had Salty Pancakes and Earthworm Infotainment. I can't remember who did it first, but one created a PayPal or a Venmo account and receive donations or super chats. That way, alternative forms of support from viewers, audience members, and either Pancake, it might have been Salty Pancakes, or Lance was calling one another out, saying, how can that person be creating that? They shouldn't be getting money. They shouldn't be getting donations. They don't deserve it. That's not right. They're a scammer. They're a fraud. You know, that's illegal what they're doing. It's all wrong and it's all bad. Fast forward months later, that person calling the other out did the same exact thing and created their own PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, and whatever else is out there, right? True levels of hypocrisy. It's pathetic, right? But it needs to be documented. That's what's most important, right? So, yeah, it's good that Atari's videos are still there, I guess. It's a shame that it's behind a paywall, but it's not the end of the world, I guess, because if supposedly somebody is rehashing or covering material that's already been covered before by a certain individual, well, my response to that supposedly would be, well, at least mine's public, unlike yours. At least the general public can learn, unlike yours, because there's a paywall restriction, right? You start creating paywall content, you can start alienating people and audience members. Not everyone will be on the same level. Like, this, the reality is, there's several reasons to why I wouldn't put the Kenny Veach coverage, my videos behind, you know, a members-only paywall, right? Take in mind, I might do some members-only videos or the odd live stream here and there in general, right? Just to fill something in so there is worth and material there. To make it fair for everyone. But as for true coverage and important breaking news, I will never put it behind a paywall or I'll try my very best not to. Let's word it like that at least. Would there be any possible reasons as to why you would lock it behind a paywall besides filtering out the cancer from the true loyal people? I don't know. I mean like the way this channel started or started to grow was because the content and material was public to begin with, right? There wasn't restrictions or limitations, so why should that change? Why, why fix it if it's not broken, right? Now, yes, maybe in the Kenny Veach case and community, there could be a lot of freeloaders. There might be a lot of people that don't want to sh um, give support or contributions in certain ways. I mean, with the Dylan Rounds case and community, the Dylan Rounds community, besides the dodgy ones, there's some very supportive people. And still to this day, some of those are still on this channel, which is much appreciated. But, you know, at the end of the day, whether people are supportive or not, depending on what community I'm in, right? The content itself should be publicly viewable, right? All about spreading awareness, where you want as many people to learn and to hear about the latest news. By restricting it, limiting it as to who can hear, seems to create a bit of a hierarchy. 
it seems to alienate people and it could come across as disrespectful towards the audience, right? I mean, if it's the response you might get where you just disable the comments at least, people can still all watch it, just not comment. You know, there's, there's negotiation along the way. But obviously, Atari will have her own reasons as to why she's made that decision. Fair enough, that's fine. But I said, the problem is, is the hypocrisy behind it. From how she appeared in the past, high and mighty, to what she's done in recent time. Oh, and the advertising of her multiple YouTube channels as well. Oh, outreach, growth, talking all about it. And yeah, what was that Atari calling Warlight Ref out for advertising this, mentioning that about stats and growth. And yet, you could have done the same thing about, oh, check these links out, check this out, check that out. Why? Well, it's just hypocrisy glowing, okay? So, leave your comments, leave your thoughts down below. I just wanted to do this video as proof and documentation of what's happened recently. Things can change in the future, but right now, based off the relevancy of it, this is a valid observation, and it's a fact that Atari is a hypocrite.